Have you been wondering how to calculate rolling averages in R? Well, in this week's R for Sport tutorial, I'll show you how to calculate rolling averages and the acute chronic workload ratio and all the options you might have to calculate these with R. So let's get started. As always, if you like this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe below, and also hit, hit that notification bell icon so you are notified of future videos. This week we're going to look at how to calculate rolling averages in R with all the different options you might have. There are actually a few packages in R with functions that will help you calculate these. Some of them will help you to just calculate your normal rolling average or a rolling sum, whereas another one will help you to also calculate your exponential exponential moving weighted average. So let's start by having a look at our data. So first of all, we're going to go through some of the steps that I've followed in my previous videos. So if you haven't seen those, make sure you check out the top right hand corner for a card. So first of all, we just need to load our uh, packages or our libraries that we're going to use today. So let's do that. And then as always, I set a working directory as a value within my environment. So let's do that. And then I'm going to read in the data from a CSV file. So first of all, let's have a look at our data. And as we can see, we have our dates, athletes, and then we've also got total distances and other values. One of the first things I notice here is that my date column is a character, which is not going to be helpful within this uh, tutorial. And then the rest of our information comes across as it should as numeric values. So one of the first things we're going to do today is we're going to just select the columns that we want to use. So let's just run this little data select one here. And we'll see we've only got certain columns here. The next thing we're going to do is in this tutorial, we are going to be used what's called mutate quite a bit in this uh, to help calculate new values. What mutate will do will add an extra column on the end of your data set with that new value calculated. So let's create a new one and we'll call it high speed. And I'm just going to use that distance. And then all you need to do is just go equals and we're going to go band five distance. Didn't mean to move down a row there, plus we'll do the same thing for band six distance and also band seven distance. So now if we run that and we look again at our data select, we have a new column with high speed distance on the end. And as you can see, it is summing up our band five, six and seven values. And then the next thing we need to do is because our data, as we said, is our, our date column as a character, we need to convert this into a date value. This is more uh, for helping us to order, but then also when we try to graph it, it will graph it more correctly. So all you're going to do is we're going to run a mutate again, and this is part of the Lubridate package, and it's going to be using the DMY function, and that's just telling the the function that it is a date, a month, and then a year value. So if we run that and then look at our data again, you'll see that now it is formatted uh, in a date way using uh, the year, month, and day format. If we cover over our date column at the top, it'll still say unknown, but we can see that that is a date field. And then the last thing we're going to do is I am actually going to go and only select the values or the columns that I want. And for that, we're going to remove our band column. So let's just run that quickly, check our data again, and we can see we've got our date, athlete ID, athlete, total distance, and high speed distance left. So we'll close that. And the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to look at the RCPP roll package. So this is one of the options you have to calculate your uh, values or your rolling means over time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that our data is um, grouped by our athlete IDs, but then we're going to make sure it's arranged by athlete ID and date. So we'll just run that quickly and then we'll open up data RCPP and you can see that it is uh, date and then athlete one. And if we keep going down, we'll find athlete two and it's also ordered by date. So that's exactly what we want. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start by creating our rolling average values. So we can see I've already set up the columns I'm going to create, and we're going to have a rolling average seven day, 28 day value. 
And the reason we're using the group by is we want these averages to be created using just that athlete. So from RCPP, you've got the role underscore mean function, and all you're going to do is you're going to supply it with a column. So we can use total distance, and then you're going to add an n value. I'm going to go 7, and then we're going to fill with uh, just zeros for this scenario. So we'll do the same thing here, but here we're going to put n equals 28. And again, we'll put total distance here, and we will run that. So now if we look at our data frame, we can see that our values are calculated here. The one thing with R, as you'll notice, is that when, um, at this point in time, when you only supply the function, you can see that this is supplying it or calculating it sort of centered around the data. So it's using the data around that date to calculate your values. So what you can do is you can uh, uh, supply and align and we're going to use right. So this will mean that it will align it to the right and it will only look back in time. So let's use this again. We'll run that. Have a look at our data set. And now you can see that now it's going down to the seventh day and calculating your average backwards. If we look at our 28 day, it's a little bit further behind as you can imagine. And you can see that information there. Perfect. So the next thing we were going to do is we're going to also add a mutate here and we're going to calculate our, we'll call this RCPP ACWR. And this is just going to be really simple. It'll be our rolling 7 divided by our rolling 28. So now if we go and run that and look at our data, we'll see that we've got some nans or infs and then we have our value come in. And you can expect that just because we obviously have our zeros and our values. So we'll use that for now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot our data sets here. So let's create this. So what I've already done is I've already set up what our plot's going to be. And then we'll just add in our line value. So what we're gonna do here is we'll just go y equals rolling, uh, what have we called it here, average, and then RCPP7. And let's just make the color of this one equal to red. Oops, and I have meant to filter with a double equals here. Okay, there we go. So now if I go and plot underscore RCPP and run that, we'll see our plot here. So you can see there's zeros and then it cuts in. So if we do the same thing here, and let's just copy this, go plus, and then we'll change this to our 28 day value. And then let's just make this blue, and we'll run that as well. And we'll see our values pop in a little bit later and a little bit smoother. And then the last thing we wanna see is can we get uh, what we'll do actually, we'll, we'll plot this on a separate graph completely, um, our ACWR, and we'll do that at the end so that we can compare it with our other values. So for now we've got our RCPP value, so let's try a different function or a different package, and this one's called Zoo. And so we're going to apply the same uh, ideas, and we're going to change this again to be average. And I've already set it up so it'll run our uh, value here as well. And so the same thing, we're going to use total distance as our x. For our k this time, it's going to be 7 again. Oh, depending on our row, we're going to have 28 here and then 7. And then we'll just fill with zeros again. This time, it's just going to already calculate our value. So let's run that. And let's close our RCPP one. And we'll look at zoo. If we look to the side here, we've got exactly the same options. And again, our zoo function is also centering rather than aligning. So what we can do again is we can add in on the end here, align equals, and we'll put right again. So we'll run that again. 
and this will just copy over everything and right over it and you can see again it's aligned in exactly the same way as before and because it's the same looking at exactly the same thing it's going to give you the exact same numbers and outputs so again if we were to add in to our um, plot again if we just comment out our pipe we'll run that bit we were to do the same thing we'll go y equals rolling oh, average zoo 7 and we'll go again for color equals red and we'll copy again and we'll do the exact same thing here but we'll put in our 28 and then make it blue and then let's plot zoo you can see it looks exactly the same as what we had with our rcpp so very simple very straightforward both give you the same outcomes so again let's now look at a different package and this one is the pragma package so we'll just run that first piece again and then it's exactly the same idea here we're going to add in our value so our x will be our total distance oops i didn't realize i deleted something on my pipe so our total distance and our n will be 7 and this time we need to add in a type and this one we're just going to put s for simple we'll do the same thing here 28 and total distance and then let's make sure these are again our average and we'll do the same thing for our rolling here And let's run that and now let's look at data pragma instead and we'll scroll across and you can see here that uh, pragma is working in a different way and at the moment it's not actually calculating our average here until it gets down to here well sorry let's rephrase that as it is calculating but it's giving you the average of what is before it rather than putting zeros in as fills so in this way we're getting a, a more accurate value and it might be better for you to use pragma from this point of view as it will give you those values as you go so if we look at our seven day they do match up with our rolling from our zoo function but you don't have to do anything extra to get your 28 day value back here so now if we plot these again and let's go rolling Let's make this y equals rolling underscore average underscore pragma underscore seven. And again, we'll go color equals red. We'll plus that, change this one to blue, and then we will get our 28. To run that, oh, again, forgot I hadn't put my double equals. And now let's put our plot underscore pragma instead and you'll see that you get more of the the time from the start rather than what we were in our previous plots so if we go back and look at just our plot from zoo again we have these spaces at the front where there's gaps so maybe pragma is a better option for that the last option that pragma also provides is we can do the exact same thing with our total distance and our seven but now we can kind of calculate our exponential weighted moving average so let's put in our 28 here and then total distance again i'll change these values so it should be average rather than sum and these values will appear slightly different as they are exponentially weighted so let's run that again look at our data pragma scroll across and you can see we have the same values at first but then they start to differ you can see that really quickly from here so we're suddenly already getting a bit of a um, an acwr appearing whereas over here we're not so again let's plot those so we're going to go and go equals here and then we're going to go rolling average underscore pragma underscore e underscore seven and again we'll go color equals red 
and then the last thing we'll do is we'll plot our 28 day here and we'll put our blue so let's plot those run it oops I forgot to put this as y equals so we'll plot that and you can see now that there's a lot more variation there in our rolling average so now let's uh, plot everything so we can see what our ACWRs look against each other so let's just choose one to start with we'll go G on line and let's just see how our y equals and let's go um, let's look at our zoo underscore ACWR first and let's see how that looks and as you can see there that we have an issue because oh, I forgot to put a plus rather than a pipe so let's run that and let's have a look and you can see it removes our, our infinite values or our missing values Let's do the same thing with our RCPP ACWR and let's see what that looks like. And again, it looks exactly the same. So let's see what our Pragma ACWR looks like. And it's a little bit different because it was giving us values from the beginning. But what we can do is we can also line up our Pragma one ACWR with our Pragma underscore E underscore ACWR. And let's just change the color of this one to red. And let's have a look how they see. And you can see there's a lot more variation in this one. My data set isn't perfect, so it's not going to look great. But you can see how uh, R can provide you some really simple ways of calculating uh, both exponentially weighted and just your typical normal rolling averages. This is very simple to do in R using your group bias and using a mutate function to add the column. So if you guys have liked this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe below and make sure you hit that notification bell icon to see future content. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time where we'll continue to power performance through R and data. Thank you.